previously on Heaven Only Nodes. Con, have you seen those spare nodes? Second drawer. <sighs> Found them. They sound fresh, too. I'm Gary Bowton, and welcome to another Zara TV tutorial at ZaraZone.com. This month, I'm covering the Shape Tool. It draws, it edits, and makes beautifully sliced julienne potatoes. Come with me and explore the possibilities. First, go to ZaraZone.com. Click the Read More link and then download and open the tutorial files for this month. Okay, when you've chosen the Shape Tool, you have options on the info bar to create line segments or curves when you click, and the connection for the control points can be smooth or cusp. I've chosen line and cusp connections because when I want a curve segment, all I do is drag on the line and it becomes curved. And curve segments have control handles by which you steer the slope of the curve. Remember the keyboard shortcuts L and C. I'm going to press C for curve, and now when I click, I'm creating curves. Now, when you click drag, you're not steering the curve like you do with the pen tool. You're repositioning the current node. Now it's back to lines again. You press L, and a single click of your beginning point closes the path. Although the curves were created so they're smooth, because the joints are cusps, you can make a connection point by adjusting a control handle. A double click on a node converts a cusp to a smooth joint. Let's play a little more with joint properties. Regardless of whether you begin with cusp or smooth joints, a curve segment is always created with control handles in a 180 degree opposition. So if you reposition a control point, the curve segments will remain smooth at their node, even if the joint is cusp. You can even select multiple nodes by marquee dragging, and when you drag, the curves remain curved. However, when you drag on a node's control handle, all deals are off and you can drag the handles to make the connection pointy. I'm going to start over again to make the star-like shape, but I'll specify smooth joints this time. You'll notice that the shape will look pretty much identical to the same shape with cusp connections, except now, dragging on the control points only affects the curves and not the joining part of the control point. Another fun thing you can do with curves is to convert all the nodes so lines go between them instead of curves. Deleting nodes when the shape tool is active can be done by hitting delete or backspace on the keyboard, and you can also click the delete point button on the info bar. In practice, you can add a control point just by clicking on a path segment. So I'm going to add a digit to this fellow's haircut by first clicking on the path and then clicking smooth on the info bar so editing this node is easier. If you hold shift while dragging on a smooth control handle, you move both the handles in tandem. And to return the drawing to its original state, you can click or marquee select nodes and then press delete. Here's a neat trick to pan around a zoomed in drawing when the node is selected with the shape tool. You use the tab key, the interface auto pans, and if you want to go back, you reverse the path with the button on the info bar. Let's get into joining and breaking paths now, because this will be necessary in a lot of work. I create a circle, and then convert it to an editable shape. With the Shape tool, you marquee select two of the nodes, and then click the Break at Points button. 
The result is two shapes, both arcs. See? Choose Utilities, Line Gallery, and then you can make each open path unique, as I'm doing here. This is a great way to make direction arrows or other artistic elements in a composition. When the novelty is worn off, you can connect the open paths by selecting both and then choosing Arrange Join Shapes. The most recent outline property is given to the combined shape, and you can still manipulate parts of the combined shape by selecting its nodes with the Shape tool and dragging to reposition it. Okay, joining shapes can also be done so the end nodes on a path are connected. Try this to make a zigzag line. First, drag out a horizontal guide, and then three vertical ones, spaced an inch apart. With the shape tool set to line and cusp connection, click a point at the bottom left of the guides, and then up and then down, working right to make an inverted V. Choose the selector tool, hold control to constrain movement, and then drag and drop a copy to the right of the original. The Shape tool can be used here, but I'm using the Selector tool. When you drag an endpoint to over a different selected node, the cursor tells you that you're going to connect the two different lines. Voila! You have one shape now, and can repeat the steps to make a zigzag line as long as you like. You can also make a perfect wavy line out of a copy of your zigzag line. Marquee select all the nodes and then click to curve on the info bar or press C. You can also delete points and the segment between the neighboring points will change to the shortest distance between the two. And if you choose to break the path at control points, you wind up with two or more shapes and some interesting design elements. Moving on to some more node-related stuff, a path that has an outline with greater than zero has properties you can adjust. This shape has a tapered pressure profile applied to it, but if you change your view quality to wireframe, you'll see the underlying path itself. No frills. Open the line gallery now, if it's not open, and look at how the nodes are joined. The shape has a round joint, but if you set it to miter, the path has corners now. And the blip on this joint here is because the underlying path isn't perfectly perpendicular, which I'm fixing now. Your third option for joins is bevel and this is both ornamental and helps hide joining nodes whose paths are not perfectly aligned. The end of the open paths can be capped as round, as I've done here, and also butt and square. The difference between butt and square is that a butt line cap ends exactly at the last node, while square ends at the outline's set width. When you've bothered to create an elegant shape and it's an open path, it doesn't have to remain that way. You use the Arrange, Convert Line to Shape command, and bang! You have a closed path with no outline width. I'm selecting all the nodes with the Shape tool now, and reducing their number by dragging the info bar smoothing slider. There! Now if you go to Wireframe View Quality, you can see the new path. This shape can be filled with any fill you like. I'm using a linear gradient here, and guess what? This thing that used to be a line can now have an outline, because it's no longer an open path. Now, let's say you want this to be a line again. You can select nodes at either end of the shape and then choose Break at Points, and basically you have two copies of your original path.
As an open path, the shapes can't have a fill anymore, but they can have outline properties, including an arrowhead. And the arrowhead can be reversed by choosing a reverse path. Okay, it's hands-on time now. Import or drag the clock tower JPEG image into a new document. It's 1024 by 1024, so you can adjust the page by dragging on its margins. With your newly acquired shape tool skills, I'm going to ask you to trace over parts of the clock. Tracing is one of the best ways to refine your coordination and skills. On your own, you might want to fade the item to trace. You select it and then choose the transparency tool, and then drag the slider on the info bar to the right. Right click and then choose to lock the image. Now you don't need an additional layer. Choose the shape tool and then give your line width about 2 pixels and then shift click on the red color on the color line or something that contrasts against the image. Set the properties to line and cusp connections for the tool and then start clicking at the top of the tower working clockwise. When you come to the curve at the clock's face, click at about 3 o'clock and then drag the line to a curve as I showed earlier. You now have a couple of straight lines, so you click points, then another curve, click points and then drag the line to a curve. Don't forget that you can switch to the push tool to navigate around the page by pressing spacebar. If you'd like to try your hand at working with curve segments, you have one at the left side of the clock face. Press C, click points, and then adjust the curve using the control handles. Go back to clicking lines to now close the path at its beginning. Yay, you're done! Here's a payoff. Why not use the Extrude tool to totally recreate the clock tower? Here's how. Click drag the color sampler, the eyedropper tool, from the status line at the bottom of the clock tower image to fill your shape with an off-white. Now choose the fill tool and drag downward on the shape to get a lighting fall off on the shape. Now choose the extrude tool and drag on the shape to apply an extrude. Dragging on the face of the extruded shape rotates it and dragging on the edge decreases or increases its depth. Don't worry that the image's top is near black, there's no passing or failing grades in this tutorial. Let's try another part of the tower. The brass L-shaped area is an easy one to copy. All you do is click points around it in line mode with the shape tool. Once you've closed the shape, sample the darker brown to fill the shape with solid brown. Now to imitate the play of light and dark reflections on this piece, with the fill tool, choose fractal plasma from the info bar drop down, and then drag the fill handle outward to increase the size of the fill. Call up the color editor and choose the local start color, and then use the eyedropper to sample a lighter brown from the image. It's back to the extrude tool. Drag in the face of the shape and then angle it so it looks like the shape in the image. As you can see, I'm alternating between the shape, extrude, and selector tool to move shapes so the underlying image is visible. Now for me, the off-white shape needs a little angling, but overall, I think if you follow along, you'll impress yourself and certainly others. Let's wrap up this month with adding an extruded circle to the composition to represent the face of the clock. Again, a linear fill will simulate the light fall off of the original. And once you've assembled the pieces, you're going to wow your audience.